call the meeting of the select board to order at about 501. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the South Woodstock treatment plant design. Uh, I'm Susan Ford. My left is select board member Mary Riley, Carrie Cole, Greg Fullerton, and Ray Bourgeois is on Zoom. Um, so this is going to be an open discussion. We're going to start with our town manager, Eric Duffy, presenting some of the history of this and some of the design plans we've received from the engineering um, company. Uh, after that, we will welcome your input. When I call on you, we'll ask you to come up here so that people on Zoom can see you and that you're recorded. We're going to allow each person two minutes. We only have an hour for this meeting and there's a lot of people here and, and several on Zoom. Um, please state your name. And it's important that you address us and not each other. Carrie will let you know when your time is up. If you're on Zoom, if you can put up your electronic hand to speak, um, Eric's going to help me with that. And once we've gotten through what everybody speaking once, if there are people that have something new to add, we'll allow them to speak for another minute. Um, it's important to note that we're not making any decisions today. We're not voting on anything. We're just here to listen to what you have to say. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. Thank you very much. And I'll just reiterate uh, something the chair said. Um, just to be respectful to each other and the board members. Uh, this is our, our first conversation about this, and uh, we hope this is one of many. So just uh, keep that in mind as, as we talk. Um, so I was not here uh, when any of this first started. Uh, it's probably for my own benefit, but also for the benefit of people online and uh, here tonight. I want to kind of give a brief, brief summary of the process that went this uh, project went through and where we are today with it. Um, so. <clears throat> This is just a brief summary of some of the public meetings that were made uh, for this project. Um, in February 29th, 2020, this project was presented at the town meeting. Um, three days later, on March 3rd, uh, the residents voted in favor of this project. Uh, the project also went in front of the Conservation Commission and the Town of Woodstock Development Review, Review Board um, with the specs that make up the uh, project as you see it currently today. Um, and all, all three of those meetings, besides obviously the voting, um, public comment was available for the project. Um, people could come and make their concerns felt on a number of issues. Um, so the board and the town did make uh, accommodations for people to discuss the project uh, before it was uh, put together. Um, funding beyond the bond that was approved at town meeting um, and then various grants the town got for the project. Um, the select board this past summer allocated $10,000 of opera funds towards this project for a design on the plant. Um, so that's a possibility when we talk about next steps, there, are, there is $10,000 allocated uh, for that. Um, any money beyond that $10,000 um, will have to come from all sewer users. And I want to stress that point because this is not just a self Woodstock issue. Um, any funding above the $10,000 will be seen in sewer user user fees. So everyone, so any funding that we, the, the board votes for uh, beyond $10,000, <clears> that funding will come from sewer users. Sewer, sewer users, users, so anyone on a sewer. Um, and I stress that because I think tonight we probably have a lot of people from South Woodstock, which is great. Um, but the decision will impact anyone that pays the sewer fee. So I'll make that clear up front that that will be how the money is allocated for further down the road. Um, I'm now going to go. So when I came on board um, back on February 1st, um, this discussion of the plant had kind of first started uh, as far as I know. Um, so I reached out to the engineers that we've been working with, Hoyle Tanner. Uh, them with the construction company, Daniels, that is working on the plant, uh, came up with three options, uh, a low fee, a middle fee, and a high fee. Um, I will show you those three options now. Uh, that will show you the price uh, that they quoted us back in March. Um, and then we can kind of go on to the public discussion after that. Um, Working. Sorry. 
Um, so the first alternative they came up with, um, for those you know, there should be a six foot chain link fence around the uh, plant. Um, their first alternative was to increase that to eight feet um, and then put the privacy borders behind that. Um, so that was option one they came up with. Um, option two is how those eight foot, uh, did someone find looking the, okay. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, option two um, is to have the eight foot fence and then have vines kind of grow on the fence to kind of block some of that. It'll maybe look better than the privacy um, borders. We can get into this conversation further. Um, our wastewater treatment director was kind of against this idea of the vines growing and taking care of them and the added cost of that. But again, that's an option presented. Uh, third option our engineers came up with, you see here, is to take the uh, paneling that's on the, the office area, basically, and have it come out and cover the entire tank with that with that siding, and it looks something like this. This is a computer-generated uh, image, so it won't look exactly like that, um, but those are the three options they came up with back in March when we reached out to them. What, yes. What was the first option? I always wanted to. Yep, the first option was uh, a six foot fence there now and just increase it to eight feet. You mean the chain link fence for the barbed wire? Yes. Yes. So the first option, um, the eight inch fence would cost roughly $2,500. Uh, the second option, the eight inch fence uh, or eight foot fence, I should say, sorry, um, with vines, roughly $21,400. And then the siding and trim on the plants, the last option was roughly $82,700. Okay. I hope if you wait, hold on one second. Um, so those are the three options right now. Um, before we open the meeting for a public discussion, uh, Susan, for the chair, wants to go over the rules again. Oh, you already did them, right? Yep, we're good. Um, so I'll, with that, I'll hand it over back to Susan, and then questions can come from there. Sir, can you you have to come? I'm sorry, you have to come up here and state your name. It's, it's six feet. Sorry, that's my height. My my mistake. Yeah, oh, okay. six feet and both of them. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll just say that this conversation is not just about these three options. We want to have a full conversation. So, any ideas, any conversations, happy to have. Can you come up here, Tasha? Sorry. So, uh, Tasha Bus, I just have a question about the difference in the two fences. So, is the eight inch foot, 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 eight foot, yeah, sorry, eight foot with the privacy slabs in the first one? Is the, is the fencing exactly the same for option one and two, and that's the addition of the vine? Yes. So, the fencing. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. It's uh, it's uh, it's the uh, the eight foot fence would either be, be behind or in front of the six foot fence. So it'd be a whole new fence with vines on it. Got it. Yes. Sorry about that. Yes. Peter. Sorry, you have to come up. Okay. Hey. Do you want to have, you want to have, have a seat? Yeah. You can do whatever you're comfortable. Oh. Just... Well, I, back up to, I don't want that talking to you behind my back. Uh, so we we need you uh, by a microphone so people on Zoom can hear you. These are the the little black. I don't know how to do this without being rude to somebody. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. They don't mind. All right. All right. So so first of all, uh, uh, if, if you can state your name, I know. Well, I'm sorry. My name is Peter Pickett. Thank you. Right. I belong to Carol. Uh, first of all, uh, why wouldn't you? Take the six foot fence down and replace it with an eight foot fence. One, uh, uh, and then and then two. Um, I mean the the appearance of the plant is the is the issue, and um, vines on the fence 
seemed to me to be a six month solution for a 12 month problem, mm -hmm. right? Because the fall is, they fall off. Uh, so there's so there's that and I, I don't know, I don't have an answer for that one, but boy, I, I sure do think that something to mitigate the, the sense of, um, of that chain link fence that makes the place look like a jail, mm -hmm. right? And you've got uh, uh, Tracy and Jeff, they look out of both their kitchen and their living room window to this um, ugly uh, thing. We don't contest the need for the plant. We just contest the need, I mean, the appearance of the thing. Um, and and uh, has everyone on the board actually seen this plant? Yeah. You, you know what it looks like, right? Right at the pinch point where everybody has to go past it close enough to rub their nose and it's almost, uh, uh, so it's offensive uh, in, in a community that depends on tourism. Um, like, you know, and we appreciate what they come and, and spend in our community for sure. It Two sure doesn't look like that. I'm so sorry. It's two minutes. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Make your last point. I'm sorry. Make your last point. Make the last point. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I, would, I mean, that was a good one. I would think. I would on that one. I would think one. that that's, that's the issue. <laughs> it, it, it 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 just feels terribly rude to me uh, uh, for a community yeah. that has benefited from the kind of uh, of tourism of equestrian of uh, ism of people coming i had a bed and breakfast there for 25 years yeah. and i'm sorry we do need to move on we, we okay. have a lot of thank people you. and, and okay. we have another meeting at six so we do right. have a deadline thank you that building doesn't show the appreciation you feel great thank you Paul? Can you say your name again? Sure. Uh, I have it yet. Yeah. Right. Hi, my name is Paul Regan. I live in South Woodstock. And I've been passing this uh, structure for years, probably twice uh, or more a day. And I'm just appalled by the look. I find that the third option of 82,000 seems incredibly expensive for uh, for what they need to do. They don't need to do all three sides. They only need to do two. So why is it $82,000? Maybe barn board, reclaim bar, barn board would look spectacular on the building versus uh, what they have on the other structure. I think it would be a lot less expensive. Uh, let's see. And I think Peter brings up the point that uh, you know, we we cared so much about what the fire station looked like, looked spectacular. We have wonderful uh, look there. And I think we should concern ourselves with the look of this place as well. Uh, I have 42 signatures here that I will give to you for, uh, for the select board that we collected on one morning, basically, uh, at the post office. So uh, there were a lot of people, some of those same people are here. Uh, I think a couple of people from Reading signed it because they have to go by. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I just think the town needs to care about it. Now, if the funding is not adequate, I think we should go to the EDC <clears throat> or uh, let's see, the uh, Woodstock Foundation and ask for some money. And I think that that can be done through Susan if she excuses herself from voting on this. So perfect time. Thank you. Thank you. I said $10,000. Okay, next. John. John Ashura, South Woodstock, East New Road. A couple questions. Uh, 
Number one, I, I agree with Peter. I, I think the we need the water treatment plant for the village. I understand that. I don't understand the cost also as a third option, extremely high. I don't know why. We don't need all four sides clappered, only two sides. I agree with that. Why couldn't it be painted? Part of the issue is that it is really steer. It just pops up. Then we have in this town, the village, barbed wire on top of a six foot fence. Is that a requirement from the state? I don't know if you had a chance to review the statutes at all that we mentioned. Um, I can't speak to that. I don't want to. Okay. That is, uh, that's horrible. Even uh, being an ex pilot, even airports don't require barbed wire or concertina wire on top of six or eight feet fences. The last point I agree with the EDC uh, for the amount of money that uh, is in that budget that I read every week in the standard. I don't know why they can't contribute beyond 10,000. And lastly, what was the entire cost of the project? I uh, have 4.5 million. So out of 4.5 million, no money was allocated by the select board or design committee for the aesthetics of this building at all. Not to my understanding, no. The, the I, I think I would suggest the select board for future projects. That's a mistake uh, for what it's worth. I think if you can allocate 2%, 5%, 10%, depending on what it is, there are certain buildings in the village of Woodstock here that are horrible. We all know what we're talking about. I don't want South Woodstock to begin to look the same with something that looks like it was designed in Germany in 1944-45. And that's the impression. Thanks. I just want to make one clarifying point before we move on. Uh, the $10,000 is not from the EDC. It's from the COVID relief money. Uh, that's one. And two, to my knowledge, no one has approached the EDC about funding this. So I don't want to have the uh, other EDC has turned us down. I don't think I was approached them yet. So I just want to make that clear. Well, we're going to make sure everyone has a chance to speak before okay, we go back. back. Say one quick thing. John Spector is open to sitting down instead of the EDC. Just thought that should be in there. Thank you. Is there anyone on Zoom? Aaron? I don't think anyone has anything to say. No one on Zoom has raised their hand yet. Okay. Uh. Hi, I'm Terry Curran in South Woodstock on Tilly Way, and I too pass that um, prison several times a week. Um, you know, short of you know putting a tarpaulin over the whole thing and just you know with nice flowers, there must be cheaper alternatives. One of which might be um, simply to paint the uh, structure. Um, there's an and and use the vines. I don't. I I also don't understand why you have to tear down one fence and put up another, or have two fences um, for the vines. Um, but we could also. I also thought of doing something like on um, these arbavita trees that rise to 12 feet and grow quickly and are pretty cheap. Um, I was looking online um, for a, uh, it's called an Arbavita uh, emerald green, and it rises to 12 feet. It's good for uh, zone three, and we are above that, um, and it doesn't get very wide. Um, and they were like 20 bucks a piece, and I don't know how many the issue with that is, of course, we have to see if that ground that is so close to the road is appropriate for, you know, built and putting, planting trees because the poor roots are going to be rattled on a, you know, a daily basis. But, I mean, surely, even the vine um, issue, there are um, uh, perennial, um, you know, non-herbaceous uh, or deciduous vines we could do so that maybe we're not into a, just a six month um, uh, scene, but clearly something has to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to speak? Oh. Your first one was clarification on my mistake, so I think you're allowed to go a second time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Tasha Bust. Um, I have- one bit so we're getting camera? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, I have done a bit of uh, privacy screening around commercial properties before, and we frequently use a polypropylene 
uh, screening material. It comes in two by four sheets. It it can be very beautiful. It can look like vine. It can look uh, you know, that each cutout has a different aesthetic to it. It comes in brown. It comes in black. And you're talking, you know, thirty to sixty dollars per sheet. And so I just wanted to know um, if that could be a potential aesthetic option, which would provide a lot less maintenance in the future because it's not going to rust. It's not going to fall apart. So that's my two cents. Thank you. You can put it along a fence line you, so it can adhere to many different surfaces. You just screw it on. So you can just create posts and pop it up. It kind of acts like a fence, except it doesn't have that durability that you would have with a fence. But if we're just looking for aesthetics, that might be uh, a, a really great option. Thank you. You can screw it to the side of absolutely anything. Thank you. Next. Sure. My name is Dale Kerr. I live in South Woodstock also. And I guess only, I haven't been involved in, in all the possibilities what we could do with this, but I'd certainly like to say that I think it's a very unattractive situation especially when you consider all the effort that so many people in South Woodstock have done to improve their properties. We've been there since 2006, and I, you know, every year there's somebody making it look better until this thing came along. I mean, I know we need it, but uh, if I were an architectural engineer instead of a mechanical one, I would not be impressed with what I created. So anything that makes it look better, I'm certainly supportive. Thank you. Um, Carol Pickett, and I live right next to it <laughs> in the next <basement> little <laughs> house. Um, the, you can uh, take a support. I want to share with the camera. So, oh, sure. see you. thank you. Um, the amount of money that you told us is that from a builder? Is that from that's from the company that's currently in construction that's the plan right now, Daniel Construction. Okay, but have you gotten any bids from local contractors or? No, we haven't done anything beyond that okay, one thing but yet. Okay, will you? We, once the board decides what they, uh, options they want to pursue beyond what we have, then we will go and get quotes here. Okay. Quick, but there's no, we're not disallowed from doing our own exterior work on the building once the. Can you hear you? Nope. I was just I was just asking. I mean, is it it is it in our purview to do our own exterior work on that building once the engineers are done? That doesn't undermine any sort of no. I think as long as, as long as we have the right permits and the people come in and say we're able to do it, it won't okay. ruin the structure. Then we should be okay. Okay. Again, I didn't hear you. I just said um, it's my understanding as long as we didn't do anything to ruin the. Uh, the um, the structure itself, then we should be okay. So you're saying you would be you would be open to getting a contract local contract to look at it and give you a price? Yeah, so I think there's two conversations that have to happen. One is the board has to decide on options they want to look at, and then we can go and get quotes for them, um, or we can go to contractors and ask them to look at that, but that may actually require money and then go and do specs and look at options and what they could do. Where we go to them and say, we want to quote out these three things, we probably get a more accurate price at that point. So we wanna make sure that everyone has a chance to talk. So if, uh, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Thank you. Bob Waveson from South Woodstock, I've lived there for 20 years. This is really a blank canvas. We have an opportunity here to do something really attractive. You know, I could see a, a nice mural because as you're around the bend, there's one blank wall right there. You could have a nice sign. Welcome to South Woodstock. You know, Adrian Tam, who's the uh, librarian who does our wonderful town crier thing. Uh, Woody Jackson, cows, you know, the made Benninger. So this is really an opportunity that we could do to, to make this a lovely thing and, and try and you know, cover up what we've got there but 
just my thoughts. I, I don't know what the expense would be. Charlie Gilly is a professional house painter, et cetera. So I'm sure you could get some good bits from those folks. Just some thoughts, my two bits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to pause. Is anyone on Zoom that wants to um, speak? If you want to raise your hand, we can. I don't see anyone. That's. No, that's Ray just moving his ass monitor. <laughs> um, He's on the board. Is there anyone in the public who hasn't spoken yet that would like to speak? Charles? My name is Charles Homestone. I live in South Woodstock and have for 30 years. Um, I would just like to suggest that we're putting ourselves into a straight deck here, and I don't see the need for it. Why do we have only these three options? It seems to me what we should do is ask the contracting community or the artistic community with some kind of a request for proposal for designs. These three designs are idiotic. Um, we need more imagination in what we're talking about for that building. And that's all I'm suggesting. Uh, also, I noticed there doesn't seem to be any accommodation of the existing design review procedure. I'm on the South Woodstock Design Review Board. No mention of design review in this whole process. So I'm sure it has to come after the design. It should come somewhere. And I'll just make one more point. Uh, to be clear, the three options that were presented tonight are not the only three options that the board will pursue. The point of this meeting is to have other options. Uh, those three options were created uh, with the engineering and the construction firm as three tier options. So low price point, a middle price point, and a high price point. Those are those three they came up with. Um, Anytime we ask the engineer, the contractor to do more work beyond what we contracted them for, there obviously is a, is a cost to that. So these three specs were what we could do in a short period of time to kind of have a conversation starting points. Anyone have, has anyone not spoken that would like to? Um, I know I'm looking at you uh, Ray. Okay, I think Ray has a hand up and so does uh, someone else. Ray? Yeah, I just want to, um, couple things. The vines and the any plant material, I think is going to be too close to the road and the salt will kill them. Um, and $20 for an emerald green arborvitae, it's probably one or two feet tall. So, We'd probably be replacing the treatment plant by the time those are high enough to hide the concrete. Um, my concern with the poly sheets, if we put them on a building, that would, may become a problem for uh, screwing them into the wall with the concrete, with moisture getting in there and freezing and the screws uh, loosening up. And that's about it for right now. If someone else on Zoom? Yeah, yeah I, yeah, Tom, go ahead. Sorry. Do you have a question or yeah. comment? Yeah, Tom Ayers from the Vermont Center. Just a point of clarification, Eric. Um, the high end bid for putting vinyl or barn like vinyl siding um, on, the, on the treatment plant itself, which is already on the building to the, the, the section to the left, is that for all four sides or just for the two sides that are facing the road? I believe it's for us for the three sides, but I'd have to confirm that. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a, a point of information or an observation as someone who has had vinyl siding put on, on two residences substantially larger than that. That seems like just my observation. It seems like an extraordinarily high bid for what is basically a vinyl siding job. Um, just offer that observation. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else here who hasn't spoken yet who'd like to speak? We we can't follow we can't volunteer others, unfortunately. <laughs> People who spoke before want to come up again. Hi, Paul Regan again, South Woodstock. I'm just curious about is the $82,000 already in the budget for doing that? No, yeah. there's there's no money that was allocated in the project for any design to the plant. No money whatsoever. No. Uh, that alone is unbelievable to me. Uh, number two, uh, it sounds like this structure never went through any design review whatsoever, either in Woodstock or South Woodstock. Am I correct in that? It's not within the South Woods, it's not within either design review overlap. It did go through the Conservation Commission, Commission and the development. The design review is very small. What you may be thinking of is development review, which is the zoning. Well, board. why is design review small? It's what does that are, mean? It's the design tech, the actual historic design review is the village of South Woodstock and the village of Woodstock. Of Woodstock. We do have development review, which I think is what you're thinking of. And did and that go through? Yes, it did at a public meeting. And nobody said there's no money for anything after they- So the, 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 development the, review, the development review is not to allocate funds, it's to make sure it fits within the permit that they, they're applying for. Well, uh, I suggest in the future, maybe that design review, review be expanded to the look as well. If it's not being covered under design review, then development review ought to have a design component. And I in the future. I believe that development review did get the the design. This is from February of 2021. Yep. And that's what would have gone in front of zoning development review as well as conservation commission and this this board. Well I would make the point that they didn't do a very good job because by that line drawing you couldn't tell a thing. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. But I would like to I would like to support that last statement. It's like this has caught a number of us by surprise. Uh, and and you would think that that would be your responsibility somehow to have addressed that. One. Two, when we come up with a new additional information, does it just have to be the select board or could there be a select board and community uh, 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 element in that? I mean, there are a lot of people who are passionately interested in this issue and have some of them have good ideas, right? I, I know some of them have got good ideas. It, not me, but... I sure do <laughs> sure do know some people who do. And and you would benefit in your desire to be the leaders of this community that we all hope that you will be in, that you are dedicating yourself to anyway. There's some ideas out here. Wouldn't you include us in well, I, I think, future negotiations? I think this will come out in our discussion later, but I personally think it would be a great idea for there to be a South Woodstock Wastewater Treatment Committee who can gather some ideas and pricing from local designs and then bring it to the select board. So, 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 so. I'm just, so I'm just saying. So somebody has to take the initiative. No, I, I think we would, have, we would appoint a committee. We would somebody appoint on the committee. select board. Formally, we would appoint. No, a the, so, sorry, I cut you off. Um, in today's meeting of the, of the select board, uh, which every select board meeting is public, we encourage everyone to attend. We post agendas 40 hours ahead of time. We post minutes five days afterwards. We love this many people to be at all our meetings. If we'd have, then we would have that community input and conversation. So I do encourage you to stick around after this meeting for the select board meeting at six. Twice a month, the first Tuesday and third, third Tuesday every month, we meet publicly in this room at 6 p.m. Uh, so please attend. 
Um, but what Perry's talking about is in the meeting at 6 p.m. tonight, we're going to have a conversation about committing subcommittees for various issues in the town. Her recommendation is have a subcommittee for a self stock with water treatment facility. One or two members of the select board will then be on that committee and they'd be tasked with finding information out about other options for this and other things. So they would come to the community asking for help. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Oh, so how does that have so how does that have to come to the next meeting? Is that well, I think we'll let you know when we get have the next meeting and we'll you know certainly make it a public next um, meeting will be Tuesday at six o'clock. Our right? next meeting is tonight at six o'clock. Tonight at six o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we invited? Yes, Everybody you're always, always invited. invited. Open to the public. And welcome. <laughs> to get lonely. <laughs> Did you want to say something? So can you, can you please come up and. Okay. I can't hear a word she's saying. recorded meeting and and I I I well, want to listen to you and everybody wants to listen to you but there's a whole group of people that can't hear you. So Does anyone else have a comment they want to make? Yeah. Yep. Put some. I'm, yep. I'm Elizabeth Wolf. I live in Southwood Stock. And I think in listening to the design ideas, the creative ideas, I, I think it's a moving forward moment because <laughs> it's there. So um, the choices sound like either make it pop out with murals or designs or subterfuge. So I think in going forward, whatever the next steps are, I think the task for if it's a design committee or whatever, it should be, do you want it to disappear as a community or do you want it to pop? I think having worked in city government, the popping feature might need to be studied because it's a, both a traffic area. So if it's a pop out or a mural, People might slow down. So I think in I think this is all about the going forward. And the going forward should be what do we want as a community? Do we want it to look like a mural or a design? Or should we all come up with a way to make it sort of disappear? And if whether it's trees, barn board, 
I think we need to decide which direction or you guys decide which direction. And I think we could then all support one moving forward solution. Thank, Thank you. you. Danny? Uh, Danny Cook at Southwest. Uh, I think um, a couple of things, you know, sort of, uh, I have my car repaired at Tracy and Jeff's shop in South Woodstock, mm -hmm. and I've heard all through this process of, of Tracy's frustration day to day, trying to get someone to cooperate with her, give her some information, give her some answers. For all of us, it's an aesthetic thing. We passed it twice a day for Jeff and Tracy. It's a financial thing. It affects, directly affects the value of their property. There's no way not to see it looking up. Yeah. And, and you are, and you are, absolutely, yes, you're right. Um, so it is a really important thing, and of course, people are emotional about it. But I really think, as you mentioned, you getting mentioned right before me, I think it's a really good idea. This is a springboard. There are a lot of great ways. There are stone, there are brick veneers that are not particularly expensive. That the combination of wood, some fake windows on it, you know, just kind of into the wood and into the blended into the wood and into the brick. It, it wouldn't be, I don't know, if it was eighty thousand dollars. It wouldn't be near that. I've used um, the both both kinds of facades, stone and brick before. Uh, it's great material to work with. And, uh, but I think, um, you know, I think it can be solved and, you know, hopefully something that's a little less unsightly would be good for everybody. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to make a comment? Paul Regan again, South Woodstock. I'd just like clarification on what you think next steps are, because I'm confused. Uh, we have we have some money, I guess, that is there. Uh, but what do you see as a select board as to what your next steps are? Thanks. I think what what Carrie laid out is probably, I mean, we have to discuss it as a board mm -hmm. at six o'clock, but um, forming a committee with two select board members and seeking some people from South Woodstock to be on that committee to have a discussion is probably at least one next step. I can't speak for the rest of the board. So I'm, I mean, I think, I think we're all in agreement that the three options we have make no sense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we as a board have to discuss it and agree, but I, I would think that a committee of involved and concerned citizens and select board members could come up with some much more, um, you know, much more agreeable options for everyone that would probably be much more affordable as well. That'd be a good safe place in about 15 minutes. Yes, yes. I can do that. This is just a discussion meeting. So as talked about earlier about public meetings, uh, if there's going to be a vote, it has to be posted ahead of time so people who would be affected can show up and talk in support or against something. So I encourage everyone to stay for every meeting and come to every meeting. What's going to happen in the next meeting is one of the agenda items we're going to talk about is forming commissions or committees, subcommittees. And as Carrie said, one of those subcommittees will probably be a self woodstock wastewater treatment facility subcommittee. Um, that committee, either if it's formed tonight or formed in the next meeting, will then do the research and, and go from that point. So it's just the first step of, of probably many. And Eric, am I right that when we form committees, we ask people to apply or right? So it depends on how you want the committee to be formed. It can okay. be a subcommittee of just two members who then go out and talk to people and meet people. Um, if you form a, an actual committee that's not a working committee, then you'd have to follow open meeting law. Right. Okay. So, if uh, someone has a question, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Charles on Zoom. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm not a voter in Woodstock, but we do pay taxes in Woodstock because we own land on the on Bryant Road. I think everyone agrees that this is an eyesore, which is unfortunate because it's your your welcome to South Woodstock. And um, I think that it does make sense to look at anything that we do as an investment in the community from the perspective of it um, adding to and not subtracting from real estate values. And speaking, for example, with regard to Jeff uh, and uh, Tracy, 
uh, if I were them, I would probably apply for an abatement of my assessment. And uh, I think that uh, there are probably other folks in town who, over the long term, could also uh, successfully appeal their assessments, which would, of course, would result in, in lower taxes for the town. But uh, some of the solutions that have been proposed, I think, you know, have merit, including the idea of, of uh, barn board. And uh, I do agree with the uh, comments that others have made with regard to the expense. It seems that a ninety thousand dollars is an awful lot to uh, accomplish that particular objective. But in terms of the total project cost, ninety thousand dollars is two percent, and it doesn't seem like an extraordinarily large amount to allocate to beautification. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. No more questions again. Uh, if there's no more questions, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We cannot start the next meeting until six o'clock because it's, it's go a get a snack. Thing. Right. <laughs> go out. Oh, it's warm in here. Dressed wisely. <laughs>